Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be taking a look at some must-see data for Cardano. As I get into this video if you find it useful and informative hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel why not go ahead and subscribe. Tap the bell, select all notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with all the videos that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. If you have not yet joined us in Discord links in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24-7. It's completely free to join so why not go ahead and check it out today right let's get into this right so um obviously this is just kind of like the price action the price charts for cardano's ada now uh, essentially this is a weekly we are looking at progressing up a little bit here um, i'm still expecting new all-time highs all of that kind of good stuff but i don't want to kind of highlight a couple of key things here before we get into um the real good stuff right so uh, from the all-time high okay down to the low point that we were at uh, we have dropped 75%, okay? Um, it's a really reasonable amount. Um, and again, this for most people would be, you know, bear market territory. And whether we want to call it a bear market or not is entirely up to you guys. Uh, on the channel, we like to think of this more as a bearish phase of a bullish cycle, okay? Um, but again, 75%, you can't really chalk that up as anything else other than a bear market by most people's standards. And the only difference really is that crypto space and the bear market usually lasts for quite a significant period of time, uh, usually, you know, 18 months or so. Um, so when everyone calls a bear market, you know, you have to take that with a bit of a pinch of salt because um, a bear market through the traditional kind of stock market is very, very different to what a bear market is like here in the crypto space. And I think this all comes down to the uh, amount of money that the space has in it, which ultimately isn't actually that much. Um, so just, just keep that, bear that in mind, right? 75% drop, very significant, definitely very bearish, um, but we are looking for reversals in this. I'm not expecting us to drop down lower than the low that was actually achieved down here uh, in February of 2022, but anything is possible, but let's keep our eyes open to what happens next, okay? So I just want to kind of highlight that. And there's also lots of different ways you can count it. We could count this here as our fourth wave low, and this as our fifth wave high that's a possible count and if i actually go ahead and remove this i have some ai that also runs in here and that's exactly how it plotted it um but i also think um based on let me actually just put that back uh this corrective pattern of this fourth wave to me this actually looks more like an expanding flat correction with the moves that are going on here meaning that we haven't had the fifth wave the ai doesn't really plot out those kind of moves very well and um, so you know chalk that up to what you think uh, it's entirely up to you i'm not hiding anything i think that that's a, uh, an expanding flat correction that we've seen um, from the highs of may 2021 through to the lows of february 2022 um, and it's a really complicated corrective pattern there's lots of corrective moves going on in there um but the ai does think that actually that was the fifth wave and then therefore this correction that we see afterwards is basically just that and then we move on up and we could see five more waves going up afterwards right as i said 75 percent is very significant for the crypto space uh, historically speaking 95 percent correction is what a bear market would low at um so you know if that is something that we see then we do see that but essentially i don't think that is the case with what is going on here um okay cool so let's get into the good stuff then so i have this data now this data is super interesting it's not the first time i've brought this up on the channel um but essentially this is actually sorted right so i've sorted this by transactional volume based in usd okay and cardano does come out on top of this level okay so 26.75 billion dollars in trading volume um has in the last 24 hours has basically been achieved by cardano okay there's also a column here called adjusted uh, transactional volume okay uh, and again here we actually have cardano's adjusted volume slightly lower and it's at 26.59 billion how they get to the adjusted I, I don't know they're doing something with the data in the background to justify it whatever um, but essentially we end up with the same scenario at the top of the game here what do we have? We have Cardano. Now, the adjustments are really interesting and really impactful, however, for Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a trading volume, a transactional volume of 24, uh, sorry, of uh, $22.82 billion, right? Uh, in the last 24 hours. But when it's adjusted, it's only 9.47 billion. So whatever adjustment model that they're using here, it hasn't really affected Cardano, but it has affected Bitcoin massively. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how they kind of do that. I might dig into that at some point. Ethereum drops from 10 billion to 8 billion on the adjusted model. And I do want to highlight here that we've got um, basically two and a half times more transactional volume on Cardano than Ethereum, uh, which is really, really,
really interesting. Now, obviously, they don't have everything on here um, because if I did, I think I'd be able to find Solano and compare that. Let me actually go by market cap and see if I can find, uh, we'll go with a reported market cap here, uh, Solana. So Solana does not have any kind of reported transactional volume here. Um, so I cannot get a comparison of what that looks like for Solano versus Cardano. And um, so, you know, we could chalk that up and say they've got no transactional volume. I don't think that's true either, um, but they're definitely going to be up here somewhere. Um, but it'd be interesting to know if they're doing more transactional volume than Cardano or Bitcoin, uh, specifically on the adjusted model, which is really interesting. Now, if we take a look at this um, from a median, um, then, you know, what is the average essentially? Uh, you know, we still have Cardano coming out very, very high here at $143 per transaction. Okay, so pretty reasonable, but obviously not as good as many of these others, right? So um, if we have actually a Bitcoin's only $100, which is just bonkers in itself, and uh, Ethereum's at 131, um, USDC are slightly higher, obviously. Uh, pretty much the stable coins are running quite high. You've got wrapped Bitcoin actually running quite high as well. Um, imagine not that many people are using it, which is probably why. Um, but let's take a look at some active addresses, right? So Cardano is uh, has got 152,000 active addresses, okay? And um, Bitcoin, 949,000 and Ethereum 637, okay? So what does this mean? Well, it means that basically Cardano is driving 2.5 times more uh, transactional vo volume than Ethereum based on, what's that, one-fifth of the active addresses. So in terms of like a community that's actually actively using a network, there's a hell of a lot more activity going on in terms of transactional volume on Cardano than Ethereum, just pound for pound. And we start thinking about the number of active addresses versus the transactional volume in the USD. And then compare that comparatively, I guess, to uh, Cardano uh, against Ethereum, with Ethereum being you know 637 active, uh, uh, 637 active addresses versus the 10 billion in transactional volume it basically means if you were to divide those two things together you're going to find a, actually um you know pound for pound cardano is well more a uh, way more active than, than maybe people are making out and which is really really interesting but we can go a little bit further than that right i said this is a kicker of a report and i've put a lot of data in here um so what we've got is uh, transactions right so cardano has 130 uh, thousand transactions okay in the 24-hour period bitcoin has 270,000 transactions ethereum 1.19 million so nearly 1.2 million transactions so we've got a lot more active addresses okay we've got um basically lower transactional volume but more transactions now this is interesting it's interesting for multiple reasons right so not only do we uh, see on cardano that we've got you know, 2.5 times more volume going through the transactions than, um, you know, than Ethereum. We also have one fifth of the, uh, <laughs> it's actually more like 25%, isn't it? So yeah, I'd say one, one quarter, a quarter of the um, active addresses that are driving that volume. And essentially, we're looking at the number of transactions being significantly lower. This means more money is actually going through and significantly more money is going through Cardano than going through that of Ethereum, which is a, it's kind of like really bends your mind quite a bit because you think, how on earth is that is that happening? Right. Um, but basically, there's an active community actively, you know, moving things around whether this is nfts or you know, new to kind of uh, the swapping space or whatever um, but it's a very active community on cardano to drive that kind of transactional volume now we can get into the payment section right so uh, we have uh, essentially 360 uh, 000 payments uh, for cardano we've got 1 million for uh, ethereum right so we know that there's a little bit more going on there and uh, to put bitcoin into into the running here that's 0 0.83 million so basically 830,000. now what about the fees well this is really where the kicker comes in right uh the fees on cardano for all of that volume that 26.75 billion dollars moving around is thirty-eight thousand dollars. get your head around that okay to move 10 billion dollars for ethereum it costs it costs 10 million dollars to move that money um, and that's absolutely insane. Um, but again, Bitcoin was also up there at $390,000 to move 
it's 22 billion. So essentially, um, you know, we are seeing the significance of fee management on these ecosystems, right? Um, and, you know, I think it's really important that we acknowledge that Cardano's is significantly cheaper it's not the cheapest by any stretch of the imagination and there are definitely going to be cheaper ones out there um but essentially it's a hell of a lot cheaper than ethereum and this is kind of the key thing that a lot of people kind of forget and uh, if i actually try to find solana let's see what kind of their fee such sec section is let me uh let me find that because i know that people compare cardano to solana quite a bit here so Oh, look, we've got no data for Solana. I don't know if that's by design or not, but yeah, no no data. So that's useless. Um, So let's bring this back in for Cardano then. So uh, 38,000 in fees, right? And significantly less. Like, I can't even do the math on that in terms of percentages less. And um, very, very significant. So uh, essentially, if you're running a business on Ethereum and you're paying these ridiculously high fees, and then you're looking at Cardano's ecosystem, although making the move right now might not be best. There are some issues on Cardano. We can't sugarcoat everything, right? Um, but essentially, then those issues get resolved. Um, you know, Ethereum had issues when it started. Um, and it went live with its smart contract platform. So as soon as uh, the issues are resolved on Cardano in the same way that they were resolved for Ethereum and the same way that they were resolved for Solana, um, you know, you should start to see maybe a migration as a significant one um, from businesses running on Cardano over to, uh, sorry, from, from Ethereum over to Cardano specifically to save serious amounts of cash just on you know, pointless fees. Um, so really interesting to see how obviously Ethereum goes on with its uh, scaling and what it goes next in terms of proof of stake, how cheaper those fees are going to become, if any, um, and all of that kind of good stuff. It'll be interesting to see whenever they get that across the line that that actually happens there. Now, um, exchange flows. We don't have this for Cardano. Very disappointed in that. Um, but again, we can take a look at Bitcoin. We talk, talk a lot about Bitcoin uh, in Discord in terms of the inflows and the outflows and net difference and the Bitcoin on exchanges dropping down significantly, etc. Um, but here's a really good example of what the hell's been going on with Bitcoin, right? And what do we have? We have inflows going in to exchanges for BTC, $531 million. Outflows, $1.3 billion. Okay, so we are losing <laughs> like double, over double um the amount of bitcoin right that goes into exchanges and i talk about this all the time we saw 105,000 uh, btc yesterday left the exchanges right it's very significant now let's take a look at ethereum what do we see we see inflows of 1.5 billion outflows of 1.3 billion i.e more ethereum or eth is on exchanges than is leaving the exchanges meaning that people are not hoarding they are not hodling they are not thinking of ethereum as an asset that they want to kind of put into cold storage and keep off of exchanges instead they're using ethereum for its use case because those payments are so expensive and those fees are so expensive that they're going to have to use it but they don't actually think of it as a necessarily as an asset of investment and this is because i think new people coming into the space can see exactly what's on the wall here you've got faster smarter more secure more scalable ecosystems why go for old technology that can't even you know stick to its timeline what always has constant delays the people who are really pro eth are older people who have been in the space for a while and have basically got a nice position in ethereum and therefore want to push ethereum they want ethereum to do well uh, because they you know there's there's personal greed associated with it right if ETH does well, they do well. Um, so I always take uh, what influencers say with a pinch of salt, specifically when they're talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, because they aren't going to move the needle massively when it comes to percentage gains for your portfolio, for example, right? They just don't do that. They're, they're there for, they have good, you have good use cases, right? Um, Bitcoin, store of value, I think essentially it's not really something you want to use for payments. Um, you can if you really want to, but I think you just end up being labeled a pizza guy. Um, something to that effect. I was a joke, but obviously you get the idea. Um, so essentially, yeah, I think Ethereum falls into that very similar boat. It has a lot going on on the ecosystem. Yeah, I own ETH. I have ETH. My Chris has ETH. Um, lots of people have ETH because you need it for transactions. Maybe there's altcoins that you want that are on the Ethereum chain. Therefore, you have to have ETH. Um, but you don't think of ETH as an investment choice. You don't think, oh, great, great. ETH's going to go up 200% by the end of this bull run. Um, you know, you don't think that. You, you think, oh, I need ETH because I want to get this particular altcoin that could do 20x. Right? ETH's not going to do 20x. So it's important that we understand these things, right? 
Um, so what you're seeing here is exactly that. You're seeing inflows greater than outflows on Ethereum, but you are seeing um, inflows lower than outflows for Bitcoin. And that's very important because you've got to follow what the institutions and the whales are doing and they're stacking up and they're parking their wealth in BTC. Um, and that is very obvious. So check out the Bitcoin video if that's of interest to you. I go through all the glass node data on Bitcoin and talk about what's going on there um, and how the uh, dolphins, sharks and whales are accumulating BTC. It's very disappointing though that I do not have the same data for cardano on this platform in fact there's hardly any <laughs> on here uh, with that so very very disappointed but essentially what data we are we have got here for cardano is very very promising it's showing us that this ecosystem when it solves its issues and it starts to scale out properly is going to be an ecosystem that is not going to be um you know forgotten about it's one that's going to shock many people and it is one that all these influencers who were shaming it and uh, being pro solana are going to jump all over do watch that space i think it's going to be very very interesting guys i'm going to leave the video there if you have found this useful informative maybe even entertaining at times why not go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at cheeky crypto with all that said done and out of the way i hope everyone has a fantastic day and i'll catch you all in the next one